Welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be on testing and water parameters. I'm going to show you how I test my water and this is the simplest and easiest way to do it. Testing is just one of them things in the hobby that you need to do. You need to know what your parameters are so you can keep the corals healthy. You can change what you need to change and keep things stable. The most important parameter that we test in our reef tanks is salinity. So I'll do that first. Alkalinity is also one of the most important things that we test for, especially if you're two part dosing. This normally takes me about a minute to do. I did this one in 45 seconds. I'm not going to make you watch me test my whole tank. So I'm going to skip forward in a minute to phosphates and nitrates. Okay. If you find yourself really busy and you can only do a quick test, then do salinity and alkalinity. I can normally work out what my calcium is going to be off my alkalinity test. If my alkalinity is 7.3, I know my calcium is going to be roughly 420. If it was say seven, I know my calcium is going to be about 400. And that's because my system is super stable and I dose alkalinity and calcium at the same rate. This is me testing my phosphates. Now my phosphates and nitrates have always been really high in this tank. Um, I believe it's because I've got no sand and the rock structure that I used and it's not very porous at all. So it doesn't give you a lot of surface area for filtration. These tests have been verified on an ICP as well. The highest I've actually had my nitrate is at 40 and my phosphates have been 0.25. So my nitrate is just over 25. So let's say 30 and the phosphate is a little over 0.1 and reefers would say this is very high for an SPS or an acro dominated tank. Um, I'd really like my phosphate to be around 0.1 or under and my nitrates to be sort of under 10, around 10. Um, that's the sort of ideal spot. So my salinity is bang on. My alkalinity is a little low, so I'm going to up that 10 mils. Calcium good, magnesium good. Okay, my nitrate, like I said, I need to work on that a little bit, bring that down. And my phosphate, just need to work on that a little bit. These are the test kits that I use. This is Salafat test kits. I've used different ones over the years, but I've always come back to these. They're just simple, easy, and pretty reliable. I've also done tests against them and my ICP, and they always come very close. Okay, check out this tool I made. I've been looking for an algae scraper for the back of my tank so I don't have to put my hand in there. Um, I bought one recently and I wasn't impressed. It was just a base, basically a long pole with a bit of a card on it. So I've got this um, razor blade sort of holder and I've plastic cuffed it to my old algae scraper and have a look how good this is at cleaning the back of the tank. So now I don't have to put my hand in the water and it is quite stable. And it just, you can see that just takes all the algae off the back of the weir. I'm going to use this on the back of the tank. And you can see my purple tang will just start going nuts in a minute and taking all that algae out of the water. It's also very cheap. The algae holder was about a fiver and it came with a load of blades as well. And I think you can get like replacement blades. You can get like a hundred for a tenner. So yeah, this is going to last me quite a while, I think. And as soon as it's a one use thing, so once I've used the blade, I'll then just throw it away and then um, put another one on the next time I need it. And I'll quickly do this about once a week, just before I shoot one of my videos. Just make sure that you don't go anywhere near the silicone or the, um, the edges of the tank. This is just for the flat surface at the back of my tank. Here's a quick look at my strawberry shortcake. You can see the flow is so much better now. You can see the micro bubbles are just dancing around, around the coral underneath. Um, and it would just be so much more healthy now that it's getting that sort of flow. The main key to water parameters is just making sure that you keep everything as stable as you can. If something's trending up or down, then you have to sort of fix it there and then just before it causes any sort of problems. 
like when my salinity crept up to 36. It was an easy fix. All I did is um, took some salt water out of the tank and added some RO water back in and that reduced it down back to 35. And I just did that over a couple of days. I'll quickly show you this coral here. This was one long branch. And what I did is I snipped it in the middle and then cut that into two pieces. And I've just glued that down to the base. And now that's going to be such a, a better um, coral once that starts growing because it would be a lot more secure at the base and you'll get more sort of branches coming up off that bit of rock. You can see here how close the gunnies are getting to my acros at the back. Luckily, these are sort of hardier sort of um, acros that I have, the torts. But yeah, I'm going to have to either move these on, frag them, or I'm going to find maybe another tank to put these in, just a two foot cube. Ideally, I'd like to have that attached to the main system, so it's still just one big system. But um, where the tank's located, I can't really do that. So my clownfish are officially divorced. They don't go anywhere near each other now. And um, they don't fight or anything like that, but yeah, this one now has taken over this side of the tank. So if I do get another tank, then I'll probably put them separate. I'll just get another black and white one and another orange one. If you're in the UK, check out these. This is Signature Frags and they're absolutely awesome for SPS acros. This is where I've got some of my higher end pieces. So yeah, I've got my Pikachu from here, a Fox Flame and my Pink Hadlack. I've also put an order in. So my next video may be an unboxing of some new frags, which I'm really looking forward to. And I'll show you exactly how I sort of get a coral and put it into my system. Okay, back to testing and water parameters. Okay, there's a load of ways of doing this, but this is the sort of easiest way for me. Um, I know there's um, auto testers and things like that, but I like to keep things simple. And I'm quite old school with things like that. Also, this weekend in the UK is Aqua H. Um, I'm going there on the Saturday, so if you do see me about, Come and say hello. I'm happy to talk about reefing. I haven't been to one of these shows before, so I don't know what exactly to expect, but I'm sure it would be absolutely awesome. I can also have a good look at some of the tanks. Hopefully some of them would be set up. There's also going to be some coral stands set up there, so it would be good to have a look at some of the corals there. There's also a few talks and a raffle, so hopefully I'll, I'll win a tank so I don't have to buy another one. And that's it for this video. If you've got this far, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.